Thank you for viewing this video from Learn Electrics. This is part three of our 18th edition series on using the wiring regulations, essential exam tips and understanding the regulations. Whether you are studying for the exam or just need a refresher on the regulations, there will be something here that is useful to everybody. In this video, we will look at using and understanding the ZS tables. We will ask, why do we have ZS? And it is absolutely essential that you understand the information in this video. I can't stress that enough. In the exam, you will get at least five questions on ZS and disconnection times. At least five, possibly more. If you follow this video, this will be five very easy questions for you. First, let's clear up one little thing. ZS is an impedance because it is measured on a live circuit, alternating current. It has frequency. Resistance is measured on DC circuits, no frequency. R1 plus R2, for example, is a resistance, a DC measurement on a dead circuit. But they are both measured in ohms and at 50 cycles per second, 50 hertz, the difference between impedance and resistance is so very small that it's not worth worrying about. So for me, if you call ZS a resistance or you call it an impedance, I would still know what you were talking about. Ohm's law tells us that the lower the impedance, the greater the current that flows. The greater the current that flows, the quicker that the fuse or breaker will disconnect the supply. The quicker the supply is disconnected, the greater the chance of a person surviving an electric shock. And we want big currents to flow during a fault. ZS is a measurement that will help us to determine if a fuse or breaker will protect persons against the dangers of an electric shock during a fault. The lower the ZS, the better, because this means bigger fault currents. If we recall from the previous video on using the contents pages, we will find on page 3 of the Wiring Regulations book the main contents page. Looking down the page, part 4 is all about protection for safety. And below this heading is chapter 41, protection against electric shock. This is where we will find information about ZS and disconnection times. If we turn to chapter 41, we will find regulation 411 Dot three dot two. It is titled Automatic Disconnection in Case of a Fault. This is what we shorten to ADS, Automatic Disconnection of Supply. In other words, if a fault occurs, the fuse or breaker will automatically disconnect the supply and make the circuit safe. The red box here tells us that Table 41.1 on the next page only applies to final circuits. And we have a separate video on final and distribution circuits. Details and links will be found in the video description. It also tells us that it only applies to circuits up to a certain size of amps, as shown in the blue circle. So, let's assume that our circuit is a final circuit and it is rated below the amp limits specified. Table 41.1 will tell us the maximum disconnection time for safety for different nominal voltages and for different earthing systems. Nominal voltage is the name that we give to the voltage, not what we actually measure. This means that in a household kitchen we call the nominal voltage 230 volts and that is what we use for all of our calculations, even if we measure 240 volts or 250 volts. For the kitchen, at 230 volts nominal, we will use the second block of data. The symbols at the top mean the nominal voltage is over 120 volts and up to and including 230 volts. Then on the left, we can choose the earthing system. Let us use TN, which is shorthand for TNCS or TNS systems, where the column and row cross we have 0 0.4 seconds, 
And this is our maximum disconnection time, 0 0.4 seconds. How easy is that? If table 41.1 does not apply, what do we do? Just below the table are two important regulations and they do pop up as exam questions. Regulation 411.3.2.3 tells us that if table 41.1 is not applicable or if it is a distribution system, then for a TN system, we allow a disconnection time of five seconds. And regulation 411.3.2.4 tells us this time that if table 41.1 is not applicable or it is a distribution system for a TT system, then we allow a disconnection time of one second. We can summarise this in this little table. For any final circuit that meets regulation 411.3.2.2 on page 58, use table 41.1 to find the disconnection time and the two ZS tables shown, which we will look at next. For any TN circuit that does not meet regulation 411.3.2.2, let's say it's an 80 amp circuit, then we apply five seconds as a disconnection time and we use the ZS tables shown in the middle row. Finally, for a TT circuit not meeting the regulation 411.3.2.2, we apply a one second disconnection time and we use the ZS tables indicated in the bottom row. Looking at the ZS tables now and answering the question, what is the maximum ZS impedance permitted? We will begin with table 41.2 on page 61, which is for fuses only. It tells us it is for 0 0.4 second circuits, which implies final circuits only. There are four types of fuse shown. BS88-2, BS88-3, and notice here that the fuse sizes shown do not exceed 63 amps for final circuits. The next fuse type is BS3036, the old rewirable type fuses. And lastly, the plug top fuse. Look also at note one just below the table. It states that these tables have been adjusted for a Siemen factor of 0 0.95. This is an adjustment that has already been made to the ZS figures for voltage fluctuations. And we will cover this in more detail in a later video. You may get a question that asks what the Siemen factor is. Now you know, 0 0.95. Moving on to page 62, we will find table 41.3 for circuit breakers and RCBOs. This table covers 0 0.4 second and 5 second disconnection times. So it is for both final circuits and distribution circuits. Three types of breaker are available, type B, C or D. Read the question. It will tell you the type. They all have different ZS values. We've highlighted in red a type B breaker of 32 amps and vertically below 32 is the ZS value 1.37 ohms. But hang on, some people say. When I'm on site, we use a different ZS value. Yes, you do, because these tables are showing tabulated values. The value has come from tables in this regulations book. Whereas on site, you're using measured values, which are these very same tabulated numbers with a factor of 80% applied. The 80% rule to allow for temperature changes. In the exam, you will be asked for tabulated ZS values exactly as shown in these tables here. Moving on to page 63, we find table 41.4, the table for fuses with a five second disconnection time. And these are for distribution circuits. There are four types of fuse as before, but notice in the orange circle, the fuse sizes now exceed 63 amps because this is a distribution circuit. And the one shown here is showing 200 amps. And lastly, table 41.6 on page 68, 
We use this table for reduced low voltage systems such as the big yellow 110 volt transformers. These transformers are centre tapped earth transformers or CTE and the voltage is often written 55-0-55. Look at the table. The columns are numbered 55 volts for single phase and 63.5 volts for three phase. Only a five second disconnection time applies to these circuits and they cater for type B, C and D breakers. Do not be confused by the C and D column. Type C can be 55 volts or 63.5 volts and so can type D. We will do a couple of examples shortly. But first, an easy way to get to the right pages quickly in the exam is to remember page 59. It is where it all starts. It is where you will find table 41.1 and all the other tables that follow after it. Remember page 59. Make it stick in your head. Any question on disconnection times, ZS, loop impedance, etc. Go straight to page 59. Look at how this information flows. Page 59 is table 41.1 for disconnection times. Turn the page and you have table 41.2 for ZS values for fuses in final circuits. Turn the page again and there are the ZS values for circuit breakers and RCBOs in table 41.3. The next page is table 41.4 for fuses in distribution circuits. And finally, turn three pages and you have table 41.6 for reduced low voltage circuits of 55 volts and 63.5 volts. So remember page 59. It really is the key to finding answers quickly and time matters in the exam. Let's have a look now at some exam type questions. But first, let's answer the question from the last video, part two of the 18th edition training. The answer to the foundation earth electrode question is found in regulation 542.2.3 on page 195. And the answer is C. The electrode shall be selected to withstand corrosion. OK, back to this video and ZS. This question is related to ZS and disconnection times. Here we go. A cooker is installed in the kitchen of a dwelling. The earthing system is TNCS and the circuit is protected by a 32 amp BSEN 60898 circuit breaker type B. The question is, what is the maximum permitted disconnection time and the maximum permitted ZS for this circuit? We are expected to make some assumptions. In a kitchen, in a dwelling, implies 230 volts nominal and single phase. We can also assume it is a final circuit and it is supplying fixed equipment not exceeding 32 amps. Looking at table 41.1 on page 59, we choose the second block. The nominal voltage is greater than 120 volts but does not exceed 230 volts. It is a TN system, it is AC, and where the column and row cross is our answer 0 0.4 seconds. The next part of the answer is found on page 62 in table 41.3 because it is a BSEN 60898 circuit breaker. It is a type B breaker, 32 amps, and below the 32 is the answer 1.37 ohms. So our complete answer is 0 0.4 second disconnection time and 1.37 ohms for ZS. Easy. Now try this one. If a 63.5 volt system is protected by a type C BSEN 60898 circuit breaker, what is the maximum permitted ZS? You need to pick out the key words, the clues to finding the answer. 63.5 volts implies reduced low voltage and ZS implies start at page 59 and flick just four pages 
to find table 41.6 on page 68. And we have four multiple choice answers as shown. Looking at table 41.6 on page 68, we can find 10 amps on the left hand side and travelling along the row we come to the column for types C and D and two columns 55 volts and 63.5 volts. The answer for the type C will be found in the 63.5 volt column as 0 0.60 ohms. It cannot be answer A since ZS is measured in ohms and this wrong answer is in amps. The answer must be D 0 0.60 ohms. And finally, want to think about on your own, a BS88-3 fuse rated at 32 amps is installed in a distribution circuit. What is the maximum permitted ZS value? And again, you have four multi-choice answers. And we'll give you the answer in the next 18th edition video, part four. Well, that's it. Don't forget, if you need a refresher on final and distribution circuits, then we have left a link to a video in the description part of this video. We've also left a link to another video, What is ZS, in the description if you need it. We hope that you found this video from Learn the Electrics both useful and enjoyable, and that you have added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our efforts are worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.